Hey everybody, good time with Clutch. So, the great war of what's the best cell phone holder thing for your motorcycle. The king of them used to be ram mounts. Everybody had a ram mount, ram mount, ram mount. Well, then you had, uh, you had, I forgot the name of it now. Not quad lock, the other one. Um, um what the what's its name um hi hold on i'm clutch from the Sack motorcycle blog coming to you live from the north pole Now we got it together. We're going to try that again. Clutch. Sack motorcycle blog. So, the great battle of what's the best holder for your cell phone on a motorcycle has raged well pretty much since smartphone come out. It used to be ram out was the one you wanted. Ram out, ram out, ram out. Well, then you had rock form come out, which also did a lot of good things. And then you had quad lock come out. Well... I ended up choosing quad lock. So we're going to do a little unboxing here. But first of all, before we do that, I'm going to annoy you a little bit and tell you a little bit of a backstory here. So I'm one of them. I got to have ram mount. Used ram mounts for many years. You know, frankly, they, they're pretty cheap. They seem to do the trick. They, they always seem to work pretty well. So I've been really debating for a while of going to this different setup um big thing helped me up for a long time the one thing i always liked about the ram out it was quick it was easy and plus i'd already bought it but there was things about the ram out that sucked like the fact that well at first when i started using it i used to just hook it in the bar i didn't use like the the low retention strap or nothing well then one day at the Sturgis Rally, I was riding around and my phone popped out on me while I was driving down the road. So I'm like, okay, well, I got to use the strapping. Well, using the strapping takes away a lot of the, I guess, the quick maneuverability of it because you got to put it in there, you got to strap it in. It just, it's a little bit harder to get it in and out quickly. So I didn't use my phone quite a bit while I was riding and didn't really need it for like, when I'm riding around here, I know where I'm going um music i've got the xm already set up on my motorcycle so i didn't really need that before well then i switched to a Senna system with a wire free or the wireless Senna on my goldwing so that was the first thing that started that So that was the first thing it started at because another thing is now I don't have my little, I don't have, I have a phone now that doesn't have a headphone jack in it so I can't really plug it in my intercom now. So the answer is well, I'm going to use my GPS through my phone and I'm going to use the Bluetooth on my headset. So, but the problem with that is now I got to avoid the stereo. So basically I got to just run for F phone, which is fine too. Um, well, another thing I was looking at is because I really like the idea of still running it through 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 my sound system. Because here's the thing, running like XM through my phone and everything else is great. But if I'm going through an area without cell phone reception, which most of you probably don't have to even think about not having cell phone reception. But where I live, up here in this part of the world, it's a thing. Um, let's put it this way. If you're running Highway 85, pretty much the whole way through Wyoming, there's... Pretty much it's a little town. It's about the only place you can get it. And those towns are anywhere from 45 to 100 miles apart. And even then, it, it's really kind of a, a ghost. It's ghost ghost town getting around there just trying to get cell phone reception. So that's part of the reason why I need to keep that XM on there. The other reason is like when I'm doing an iron butt run, the problem with that center setup is the batteries will die on me. 
and I don't want to even fight it, so I'll go back to my corded system, which now I'm back to the same issue as my phone. I don't have a headphone jack. Thought about doing dongle. Um, I, there's just a lot of things I thought about doing. And finally, I finally just kind of finally broke down and decided, you know what? Let's buy a quad lock or a rock form. So the biggest thing that did it for me with the rock form is I like their setup a little bit better for their wireless charging. That was kind of the thing that finally put me over the edge is I can get wireless charging and I can buy wireless charging setups, which I did. Um, the other thing I liked about the Rock 4 or the Quad Lock is I thought their their charging system for their wireless plug-in was a little bit better. Plus, it's they get they sell this plug-in. It is I can't remember how much it is, but basically it's set up where you can run it right off your battery. And it's got an automatic deal that tells if the phone's on or not. So if the phone's off, it, or if the bike shuts off, it'll shut off the charge on it and all that stuff. But that one originally wasn't the thing for me. The biggest thing for me is they send the, it's a weatherproof wire, so they say. And it's already set up to plug into a, what they call it, I think it's called a, U, or a SAE plug. That's just basically that little two-prong plug. Well... Up on the front of my bike, I already have a two-prong plug. That's why I use to hook up my my little USB charging port that I'd put on there before. And basically, I set that up so that way I could pull that USB port in and out. Basically, make it easier to, if I got to pull panels off that Goldwing, I can do it. So, that was probably the biggest reason why I went with the quad lock over the rock form. A few moments later. Oh, and also, I forgot another thing. that, And this is me from the future. So... This uh, rock form, or not rock form, this quad lock stuff, all the stuff I bought, I bought it myself. I'm not sponsored by them. I purchased myself because that's what I decided I wanted. And basically bought it because I wanted it. And also, like I said, I figured since I bought it, I'll try to give you a good review of it. So it's something that you can maybe think about, decide whatever you want. So, but back to the video. Earlier that day. So initial thoughts on buying it. So as far as buying it, I thought it was pretty simple. Navigating the website, all that stuff. Most of them aren't an issue anymore. The one thing that did kind of annoy me about this, and I kind of found out this more after the fact, and I don't know if Rock Forms made in USA. I don't know what's what's what. And that's really not the thing. What really annoyed me is I bought it. And then, uh, of course, my phone threw a fit because I bought something. Um, I Found out why later, because I also noticed there's like a dollar, like, you know, 96 uh, foreign currency fee on my account. So, apparently when you buy a uh, a quad lock, apparently you're not purchasing it with uh, American dollars, which, great, that's awesome. Glad, glad I knew that for it. So, that kind of annoyed me just a little bit. Because, um, like I said, I made the transaction, my phone went nuts, because I bank at a small little, you know, credit union here at home. So course credit union threw a fit about it i mean it wasn't a big deal but still it was kind of one of those deals where you know it's kind of annoying and kind of sketch and like i said you get a little nervous when you see a foreign currency fee on your account and it's pretty much the only thing i'd bought out of that account lately so bigger it's 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 a quad lock so if you do buy that now be aware that you might have to pay a foreign currency fee because like i said apparently and this was off the english what well, this is off the english site too because they have sites for all over the country or all over the world but apparently when you use the english site for to buy a quad lock apparently it's not united states english may i don't know maybe it's british english i don't know maybe it's australia i have no idea but either way that was kind of interesting so let's unbox this thing shall we Let's see here. Actually, no, we're going to do this. We're not going to do this with a knife because I don't really want to cut anything. Oh, so. Oh. Ah. No. Hold on a second, you. Whoops. All right, well, there's a whole bunch of stuff right there. Let's see what we got in here. We got a phone case. We got a wireless head charger. 
vibration dampener, which I make sure I got that. Oh, and also the 1H ball adapter. And I went with this setup because my went with the ball adapter setup because well, my both my clutch reservoir bolts are already being used by other things, and I didn't really know how good it would wrap around a Goldwing handlebar. So, the 1H ball adapter. And the other thing I would do is I bought a lot, basically a basically a ram bar that takes well it's it's similar to ram it's not a ram brand but basically it takes a a similar it basically takes a special tool you got to put in there to open it up so that's what i'm going with now i don't know how much it's going to really stop theft of the mount but first of all i figure in, in one respect the biggest, the thing that's probably most valuable on that mount to steal is probably my phone, which if I take my phone with me, we've taken the most valuable thing. Um, so I bought this mainly, like I said, it was a $20 deal. If someone really wants it, obviously they can take it from me. But really what I'm limiting, and really most of the time when you're limiting, when you're locking your doors or locking things up or just securing things better, really all you're doing is you're eliminating crimes of opportunity. Those, uh, oh, hey, cool. That looks easy enough to grab. I'm going to grab it real quick. Oh, it's going to take me more than two seconds to get off there. Okay, I'm leaving it alone. I'm going something easier. So that's kind of what I was aiming at with that. So so that's why we went with the one-inch ball adapter. Um, so I went with the vibration dampener just because I wanted to make sure to protect the phone a little bit. Granted, I don't have one of them iPhones, but still, I just wanted to maintain that. Um, like I said, I went with the wireless charger because, honestly, I want a charging solution. And... Frankly, wireless charging, that sounds pretty nice to me. Just basically pop the phone on there and it's automatically charging. Sounds good. Obviously, I bought the case. I went with the case as opposed to you can also put the, uh, you can also put their, they sell like the little pieces you can actually glue your phone. I don't really have much faith in that glue, especially when it gets warm out. So I went with the case and I actually went with their mag case because it was 10 extra dollars and it still works with the plain Jane, the old. The OG quad lock, it also works with the, mag with the magnet one. And also I'm kind of thinking, well, maybe the magnet applies to other things so I can like see people at the gym with magnetic cases just throwing them against the side of like a, a weight bar or something like that. And there's my waterproof USB smart adapter. This was the thing that really, like I said before, that really made me decide that, yep, this is what I want to go with. So, let's open that one up, shall we? Actually, let's get some tools out. Because we gotta seal them 17 flipping times. I get why they do it, but still. It doesn't mean it's any less annoying. So, and... Cool. So there's the there's the charger piece. That's a little part I was talking about where you gotta an, basically you gotta you can shut it off, you can turn it on all the time, you can put it auto. I'm probably gonna put it on all the time because that little plug area got automatically turns on when the battery turns on. Alright, let's take a look here. Oh, take that back. So uh, one thing about this. So in auto mode, the device will remain on until the after the engine has been chopped, until the battery voltage drops below 12.5. So it technically doesn't really shut off. It just waits till you drop to a certain voltage, which I guess that works okay. Although part of me you, relying on that to do the trick, I don't know if I'm a fan of that. But hey, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat, I guess. So, but yes, so this was, here's, like I said, here is the reason right here I went with this setup is because that port right there that I can set up, I can hook up, it's already there. It should be a quick and easy setup for me. And there's your USB cord. And I'm assuming that hooks into, okay, let's see here. Yeah, that USB cord basically hooks into my understanding is it hooks into the wireless charger somehow 
guess we'll find out when we get there. You know what? That's probably why it's a foreign currency fee, because uh, design in Australia. That would make sense. So, either way, like I said, still kind of annoying. But essentially, yeah, my understanding is that thing plugs into this wireless charger, and that provides you all your power. So, I guess we're going to find out when we go to hook that up. So, let's put that aside. The other thing about it, if you don't have a setup like I do, they also do send the the uh, the proper port to make this all work. And actually, it's a pretty nice looking cord. So this is how you could run it off your battery if you wanted to, just like so. So, but anyways, and like I said, you can use that to run off the battery. Like I said, I'm gonna run it off the I'm gonna run it off my SA8 already here already there especially considering how it does the auto mode yeah i'm not i don't want to rely on a voltage drop to shut that off so all right let's turn on let's check out this wireless charger shall we oh forgot to put that back in there all right so now we got that pulled off let's sneak her out so what we got here Oh, so there's my wireless charger right there. Um, so it looks to me like you got your USB-C port right there. Okay, yep. Let's turn it on, see? Got my USB-C port right there. You got, looks like a nice little weatherproof cable right there. Got the gasket there. Got the USB that it plugs into the charging adapter, so actually got a couple different ways a short cord or a long cord that's cool nice <laughs> actually got some nice cords in general to use so that'll work so there's that part let's put you back all right the vibration dampener next there ain't much to that just a little tiny deal that Damp, like I said, it's a vibration dampener. Let's see here. Okay, it's got little tiny. So it looks like it does it by, these are a little tiny rubber piece there. That's how it does its vibration dampening. Cool. All right, well, let's put that back. All right, let's look at my little ball adapter next. Shut the bright light off again. And there she be. There's your basic standard plain Jane port right there. Cool. Awesome. Alrighty, and there's the ball that'll work. Um, we'll hook that in like that. So that looks like that. So this piece will have to come off. The vibration dampener piece will have to go in. Or the the wireless deal, then the vibration dampener. I don't know. That's some kind of process. You stick them all together. We're going to find out. But all right. Well, there's that part. Awesome. Like I said, not much to that one. And honestly, it's kind of one of those deals where I probably don't even need to have that whole deal. I mean... Basically, all I need is the ball and a hookup on that. But that's just how they sell them. So that's how we're going to do it. All right. Let's take the back. Uh, this Galaxy S22 case right here. Like I said, they got a case for pretty much every major phone. Um, ah. Instructions all. Oh, my God. Well, that's cool. So I guess we got a little overzealous with the instructions because we pulled them out a little too much. Well, there's our there's our phone case right there. First of all, let's see how magnetic it is. Eh, kinda. Oh yeah, there it's magnetic. Cool. That's awesome. And like I said, I think that's. I do wonder. Like I said, I kind of, I don't know, this is the hardest thing going to be for me to give up to switch from my otter box, which I really like to squad lock. But to make this whole thing set up, yeah, that's what I'm going to have to do. Plus, I just, I don't, I don't trust something stuck to the back of my quad lock. So, yeah, I think this will work here. So, 
All right, well now that we've unboxed it, um, I do, I am gonna go check, see if that works with my wireless charger. I hope it does. I guess we're gonna find out. And yeah, so we're gonna install it here in a little bit later. Probably not tonight, but later on. All right, let's see if it'll hold on. It does. That's cool. Sweet. Well, cool. Now I can do like cool stuff, like in the car show, like put my phone on the fridge, and where else can I put it? Or I'm changing stuff out. Or hey, look at that! I can put it on my shelf. Cool, all the awesome cool places I can put my phone. Cool, now the world is my phone holder. It is awesome. Also, it works with my wireless charger, which is also great, so, cool. And like I said before, with this mag case, it was 10 more bucks for the mag case. They also have a mag mount system, which is kind of what it's designed for, but frankly, I spent the extra for the mag mount so I could do like the kind of stuff like that, like I could put it, magnetize it put it up on something i think it'd really come in handy for me like if i'm at the gym that'd be a really handy spot because you could put it like on one of the bars you're working with or something like that instead of having to set it on the shelf somewhere and then it's in the way and someone needs to move it whatever so like i said i think that's kind of cool having that magnetic part of it so i guess we'll find out in the coming time how much more of that is worth <laughs>